Hey folks, hey, it's a good looking camera today, it's only because this camera usually is over there, but I've been messing around, so we got a really nice camera today, two nice cameras today, um, but uh, so I hope you enjoy it, no fuzzy intro from me today, let me start off the show as usual by giving a big Patreon shout out to Tim, to Reese, and to Wayne, thank you very much, without you these shows couldn't happen and as Wayne's already been playing around you can find the link to Patreon in the description below and also in the chat when it pops up. Ah uh, yes, thank you for joining me, it's a Monday night, it means it's conquest time, we have issue number 18, we have two bottles of paint which also means we're doing some painting tonight and also we will have a look through the 1499 art book so that we can just have a look and see if you guys think it was worth the 14.99 and of course it's not much good for us in the uk but at least at least our european brothers and sisters can uh, decide if they want to opt out when it's time if they get offered it we'll have a look we have commander kuja with us thank you very much for joining us tonight and wayne's playing around with those keywords so i better <laughs> try to read the chat so it's all good. Play around with those keywords if you like. You can find various keywords to find yeah, using the keyword fun to start with. We'll give you a, a little, uh, uh, a little um, prompt as to what keywords you can use. And that's the chat for you. But don't forget, send me your pictures over here like we have with Tim here. And that's paint there. Uh, you can send me your pictures to any of my social media, uh, which Wayne has just put through the chat for me. Um, if you have Instagram, let me know what it is so that I can put you on my Instagram story with the correct uh, tag, uh, like that, Chick Paints, um, and you get put on my story. But also, I add it to here. Yeah, if you don't have an Instagram, still let me know that you want me to show you your picture, and I'll figure out a way to put your name on there uh, while we're at it. So... Uh, yeah, Wayne is making me sweat, yes. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to read, I'm trying to read the chat, trying to figure out what is, uh, what is a uh, keyword and what's actually for me to, uh, to read. But thank you very much. Uh, Commander, no worries. Just enjoy the show as usual. Um, let's have a think. Don't forget about my Ask Me Anything at the end of every month. Uh, throw down your comments on uh, either the Ask Me Anything from last month. You can put picture, uh, questions on there. Send me pit, uh, questions through various social media. And uh, I do a, a premiere of that um, at the end of the month. Read those comments quick. <laughs> I will have to. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to get through that, otherwise I'm going to lose them all. And uh, don't forget, by becoming a Patreon, you can actually join in on the uh, Patreon-only Facebook page, Patreon-only Facebook chat, and also the Patreon-only um, Discord server. That's the one. I'd forgotten what it is. Um, where I do have uh, Discord here, my Patreons, uh, just to really uh, uh, to make things difficult for me. Could start a conversation on there while I'm live. Um, please don't. No, you you could do. I mean, you can have a chat on Patreon, uh, Discord as well. And so, if I start talking about some random thing that you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's probably replying to the Discord chat at the same time. Uh, there are various things being added to Patreon all the time, most of which comes from suggestions from Patreon. So they, you know, by becoming a Patreon, you do kind of help influence the channel. So uh, if you feel like checking that out, feel free. Uh, sorry, dude, we'll slow down. But if you mention something with a command, absolutely no, it's it's not a problem. It's it's all fun, isn't it? I I am keeping up with it, so it's fine. You're all right. All right, so. I think that's the end of the uh, announcements today. Um, I have got a bit of a really sore neck. I don't know what happened. I woke up. So I am going to you know, be a bit stiff. Um, so bear with me for that. So if I start all oh, in pain, you know, that's probably why. But with the announcements, I'm not sure if there are any other announcements to make. So with that being said, we are going to get cracking on with having a look through both of these now. And don't forget, you can carry on having a chat in the chat. Why not? 
Okie dokie. So, as always, I'm going to move that to one side. Uh, because that's going to be a done at the end of the show, or towards the end of the show. And we have a look at issue number 18. So, first of all, uh, what comes with issue number 18 is we get some Raka Flesh and Mephiston Red paint. Which are very nice. But you might have a look at this paint. Um, the... Um, it's not focusing very well, but look at the state of that. That genuinely looks like mouldy cheese in there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be a, a if it's an issue with the paint. It doesn't look like it because a small shake kind of clears the bottom of that up perfectly fine. This is uh, I already have a rakar flesh. That's what it's supposed to look like. So uh, plenty of shaking. These uh, pots of paint have probably been sat around for quite some time. Possibly getting hot and cold, maybe depending on where they store their magazines. Um, so uh, if your paint does come through looking a bit black uh, a quick shake will probably sort that out no problem and the Miss Viston red on the other hand looks pretty good I mean obviously you always shake the paints before you use them anyway um, yeah yeah yours was like when you got it yeah it depends on when they uh, what they do with the uh, with the with the model uh, with the paints where they store them and how old the paint pot is um, I don't think there is a particular um, oh they do have dates this one is dated 2011 uh, there is a date on the bottom there is dated 2011 so I mean considering we're in 2019 now uh, eight years ago this was made is that right my math is terrible uh, it could have been up to about eight years that this thing was made and you know for argument's sake if that was just put on a shelf for the last eight years yeah it's gonna have separated uh, the Mephiston red I have here is uh, dated 2013. I mean, admittedly, that's when the when the actual plastic bottle was made. Um, but uh, you know, I don't think that they would. I don't know. But anyway, the paint. I'm rambling about paint tonight. What the what on earth? Uh, so we have two bottles of paint: Rekha Flesh and Mephiston red. Um, uh, paints have dates. Do they? Uh, is it the actual paint itself has a date, or is it just the bottle has a date? I have no idea. Uh, the label on this has 2018. Um, oh yeah, there's a stamp on there, 11, 10, 18. Oh right, so I'm okay, so the paint isn't actually as old as I thought it was. It's just that the bottle uh, that the paint is in was in, uh, yeah, fair enough, 11, 10, 18 there as well. So uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, my mind's blown. Picture looks a little dark. I'll tell you what, let me see if I can uh, brighten that up. Whoops, don't want to do that. Uh, probably easy. Let's see if I can brighten the uh, video up a little bit, depending on which uh, camera. The trouble is I'm using two cameras that are identical. Um, so depending on, yeah, uh, it's the wrong one is set up. Uh, picture looks a little dark. Let me see if I can add You meant to put a question mark on it that the paints have dates. Well, I think I managed to uh, I managed to uh, say yes, there is. The bottle has a date on the bottom of it, and also the um, there seems to be a stamp on the side as well, which could be a manufactured date for the paint itself. And lead belcher that I've got on here looks like that's rubbed off. Uh, but then again, having said that, just picked up two other random ones and they don't have stamps on the side. So uh, I have absolutely no idea. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I have no idea. All right, so let's have a look to see if I can add a uh, filter to the uh, to this. Uh, no, that's uh, about, I oh, know that's uh, video filters. Let's see if I can add. Uh, I have no idea. Can I can I add a color correction? Let's have a look. See if I can add a cut. Oh, there we go. Look at that. There we go. We can brighten that up just a little bit. How does that look now? Does that look a bit better? There we go. Hopefully that's uh, that's uh, looking better. Right. Okie dokie. So we have we have the paint. I think we've talked about paint enough. Issue number 18, we'll have a look through that in the middle. And we also have our very large, theoretically, 
gaming mats. Now this is a new gaming mat with oh my goodness right okay let's let's just open this up and have a look at this for a second because uh, this is interesting. So this is quite big and we'll um, we'll uh, we'll measure it in a minute. But right, excuse the moving of the camera, but let's have a look. See if we can uh, we can add that for a bit of. There we go. Let's let's move this around here and um, have a look here. It's upside down because of uh, the way that I do my filming. Let's hand it the right way. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty big. Um, now, of course, we are going to um, yeah, we're going to need a bigger board uh, with all the models that we have. Uh, be careful opening it. Yours ripped out of fold. I think I've got away with it. Um, I'm not a fan of these kind of paper style plastic uh, paper card stock. Uh, looking at mats, you yeah, know, those folds are pretty difficult to get rid of. I think people, I think people have said you can um, iron them. Um, you can, uh, you know, put a damp cloth or a tea towel over the top. Well, maybe not damp, maybe just a tea towel. And you can um, iron over the top to get rid of some of these folds. Um, it'll be interesting if it's true. I've never tried it myself. Um, but uh, we have plenty of, uh, um, I've got cards, uh, other boards that we can, I can use. Anyway, uh, one thing I will say that I have noticed, now we have two sides to this, it is double sided, let's move the figures. Um, it's nice and big, we, like I said, we'll measure it in a minute, it is double sided, we have a plain side here, which is uh, very nice, um, nice and clean looking. Um, which is uh, not quite as uh, grim dark as we would uh, as we would usually assume, um, but it's kind of cool. You can put some if you've got your ter own terrain, you put your terrain on there, and you can fight over that. You notice that they've uh, we don't have um, we don't have deployment zones on here anymore. I think we discussed that in, in the last issue about um, the you know deployment spots don't exist, and we don't have a death guard side. And a Space Marine side anymore. It's just a flat mat, uh, depending on which deployment zone you're going to be using, which is nice. Thank you very much for sharing all that, Wayne. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we've got the uh, plain side, which is nice. Now, of course, if you haven't got much terrain, we have got uh, a side that has terrain on it. Now, unfortunately, let me see if I can if I get rid of that. That's a little bit better. You can kind of see it without so much shine. Uh, so we have uh, some potholes on there. We have some uh, uh, terrain on here. We're going to be getting these. These are from the accessory. These pictures here, uh, and I'll talk about the pictures in just a minute. Um, but these uh, individual items, if you have a look at these, are from the battlefield accessories, which we will be getting in a future episode sometime soon. I heard people talking about those on the Facebook pages recently today. Uh, but one thing I will notice about these pictures is I don't know, I don't know why, but let me just come a little bit closer. Hopefully the focus isn't going to go nuts on me. Is take a look at the picture here of this. If you had two of those mats, you could join them up. Yes, you could. The, uh, the road here is uh, bang in the center, uh, so you could join them up. Yes, indeed, um, which would make nice, nice big uh, boards, um, as well as I think the road. So we have the roads, the T-junction here. Uh, let me try and organize where my camera is. Oops, I've caught a wire. Um, there we go, ish. All right make you all sick now uh, okay yeah so this going right the way across is dead center and if we have a look at this one it's it looks like it might be slightly off center so you might not be able to make a long mat but you could certainly double up in width but what I was going to point out about these uh, pictures here which I don't know it's a little bit jarring for me it genuinely is a top-down photograph of, for argument's sake, this is a plasma relay pipe. 
it's a top-down photograph that has been superimposed onto the uh, image of the uh, playmat. Um, which, I mean, for some people is not a problem, but I mean, it certainly does uh, leave uh, some a lot to be desired about the uh, photoshopping skills of the person who did it. Uh, especially for this here. Um, you've literally got no shadow at all. It, it's there's There's no kind of it's a little jarring when you look at it and go, oh, that's just a photo of that. Because, you know, it's not, you know, this is a uh, an artwork printed, obviously. It's some sort of, it does look like it might be a photograph. But, you know, when they took the photograph, the shadows fell in a specific way. And then this kind of just does look like a copy and paste job of uh, a piece of wall here. Um, which uh, can look a little jarring if it kind of upsets the realism. Of course, using the other side, uh, you could just uh, use your own terrain. Of course, we're going to be getting lots of terrain from the magazine itself. Um, so it's not a problem. It, I wouldn't necessarily say this was a bad thing. It's got some nice, uh, you know, the, the craters and stuff to add a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of something, something. Um, so yeah, I do like this map. Um, it's a shame it's such a thin card, but then having said that, you know, it's a magazine, um, we're not going to get a massive chunky uh, cardboard folding thing, it's, it's going to be, you know, card stock as opposed to a thick kill team board, especially on something this size. But uh, yeah, I do like this map, it's nice and big, I did say we're going to measure it, so I will measure it now, um, you might not be able to see... <sighs> How big it is. Uh, let me grab a tape measure. Uh, I mean, essentially, it's basically uh, the same size as a magazine, I think. It's 22 and a half inches wide by somewhere in the region of around about 34 and a half, 35 inches long. Let's have a look. Yeah, 34 and a half inches long. Um, I mean, I don't know if that means anything to anybody because I haven't got a kill team board available for me to grab. It's a little bit bigger than a kill team board, I think. Um, but not quite the size of a full size 40k board. Um, I would be interested to know, um, uh, even as we go along the magazine run, even this is going to start feeling a little bit um, small. And uh, like you said, Wayne, perhaps later on in a future rep issue, we may get another one of these. Um, so um, I'm curious, because especially, I mean, later on we already know, as with these, um, the Spanish website leak um, as long as everything kind of stays exactly the same we know we're not going to have to worry about the repulsive dreadnought uh, repulsive tank until right at the end but um, with vehicles such as that you know this is going to start feeling quite small uh, especially with all of those plague marines and chaos cultists we're going to be getting a bunch of other um, Marines, we're going to be getting, especially with bikes and the and the distance that those things can move. Um, you know, they're going to be zipping around this board at ridiculous speeds. In terms of, you know, you're going to be going from one end of the board to the other within a turn or two. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if we get any more of these boards. Um, even if they are the same, like Wayne said, you could double them up. You know, you just put if we uh, split over there. You know, we can we can put two models side, uh, two of these side by side. Now, admittedly, uh, this says sector seven here. Um, you can't quite see it on the end, but down here it says hab zone six. Um, so, uh, will they be slightly different so that you can uh, make it look like you've moved from one sector to the other, or is it going to be? Uh, would you have just a exactly copy and paste a job from the same map? So, uh, is it going to run on? I don't know, but it would be interesting. All the standing terrain will close that map down quickly too. It will indeed. Um, the terrain that we are going to be getting, the sector mechanic and stuff. Uh, to be honest, the Rise of Pattern Ruins, uh, this end here, 
if I can move it so that the camera can see without having to move the camera too much. The riser pattern ruins for this stuff at this end is going to be enough, I think. And then of course we'll have the Sector Mechanicum stuff, which will quite easily cover this side here. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't quite get it all in shot. Uh, yeah, the, the terrain is going to cover that up quite nicely. Um, but I, I, I would stand by the fact that uh, perhaps if we're going to be using um, all of that terrain, even if the terrain kind of slows you down a bit, it's definitely going to start feeling pretty cramped on the terrain, on the board. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how we go in the future. Um, it would be nice to see what happens. Perhaps uh, we'll see some more uh, boards in the future, perhaps. And maybe they're just, uh, as we get further and further along, perhaps they're, you know, they're going to encourage you to actually go to Games Workshop and buy uh, Realm of Battle boards, perhaps. It might encourage you to do that, or maybe it will just encourage you to uh, make your own terrain, uh, play on the dining room table and create your own battle map perhaps um, it'll be interesting to see how they go in the future um, I mean ad admittedly uh, as it stands at the minute we only have you know a handful of squads of troops they're only moving around the board between four and six inches a piece so they're not really going to be zipping around that badly and they're not cramping up the uh, the battle mat so uh, and not forgetting um, I don't think we even use the battle mat. If we have a quick uh, sneak peek here, we're still using the very small uh, mat for this mission here. So, um, yeah, we don't use the big mat just yet. I don't think it's, uh, if I remember rightly from a video I watched, I can't remember who it was, and they said it won't be until around about issue 20, 21, that they actually suggest you get the big mat out. So it's still a couple of weeks away as yet. So uh, I mean, I mean they're already out, but uh, in terms of my show, it's still only a couple of weeks away before they start telling you to use the big mat. So we'll have an eye on that. Uh, so that's what we get with the magazine. We get the two paints and we get the battle mat. And as usual, we will then have a quick gander through the magazine and get rid of that front page because we don't need it. Or I do need it, I think. But I've been throwing them all away anyway. And we get our first look at the um, Silver Templars in this one, which I am led to believe that the Silver Templars are a Space Marine chapter that was created uh, specifically to use in Conquest. It was kind of, you know, I mean, there are Space Marine chapters galore from every you know whatever you want to do i mean you know there's what do they say there's about a thousand chapters if not more in the imperium today uh possibly more now that you know re when Rebute gilliman decided to create uh the primaris chapters as well um so there are lots and lots of space marine chapters but i believe that they chose the silver templars to create for conquest so that we can have something new that hasn't been seen before um Yep, I should have kept the front covers. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> All right, so we'll have a quick look. This is Space Marine Chapters number three. If I have a look, see if I can find the folder that comes along. Uh, if we have a look, see what other Space Marine Chapters we already have. Being careful of the ripped cover that I've already got. Uh, we can have a look through Space Marine Chapters under section two. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Space Marine Chapters number one was just telling us about the Space Marines and how to make a Space Marines. Chapters number two was the Ultramarines, and we have successor chapters chapters of the Ultramarines. Again, we have the Silver Templar here, uh, and we have uh, some other successors back here. So it's telling us about successors of the Ultramarines. And then if we have a look through to, hang on a minute. Have I gone past Space Marines, Space Marine Chapters 2.4? Ah, here we go. So just before we start talking about the heroes, we have a look at the Space Marines Templars. 
There are, of course, um, their Primark is Robuto Gilliman, which means that they are a, a successor chapter of the Ultramarines themselves. Uh, so we haven't really, um, in terms of Space Marine chapters, we haven't really diverged much from the um, Ultramarines yet. Uh, hopefully it would be nice. I mean, I play Blood Angels, and uh, if I quickly go and have a look at um, the Conquest mag models that I have painted thus far, I have indeed used the Blood Angels myself to paint my own models. So uh, it would be nice. Hopefully we'll get through uh, other, uh, certainly first founding chapters at some point in the future. Uh, but for now we're having a look at the Silver Templars and we have a nice little bit of uh, fluff about them as well as a lovely painted model down here and like I said if this was created specifically for uh, Conquest as a brand new um, model boo BA suck ah whatever you're just jealous <laughs> And we have uh, some fluff about how they are um, the organization of the chapters. We have um, the company colors that they use, which is by the looks of it painted on their knee pad down here, as well as using squad numbers. So his company is on his knee pad, as well as the squad within that company is written on here. And they use the usual standard um, Battlefield Road icons to denote you know what they do on the battlefield um the reason why they put this here i tell you what i want to say it now because they don't tend to say it i haven't said it anywhere else if i pick up my uh, blood angel guy here who is a, a blood angel uh, intercessor from the first squad of the second company and uh, I can tell who he is because he has a red helmet which denotes him as a regular troop which is a battle line down here um, he has a yellow drop blood drop which is the second company and the first squad is the black knee pad with a white skull uh, various other models I might point them out later on in the future um, a veteran would have a gold helmet Likewise, a command possibly could as well. And then we have fire support, which is our devastators. Uh, they would be blue and uh, blue helmets. And uh, close support would have yellow helmets, which I might do later on when I do that. But we'll have a look. Maybe we'll get to uh, some other chapters in the future. I mean, specifically, I mean, I would be interested myself to learn about um, uh, space walls, for argument's sake. <laughs> And which is Wayne's uh, Space Marine. That's where Wayne's Space Marine loyalties lie. And actually talking about uh, various helmet colours, we have uh, the Codex of Starties uses helmet colours to denote a rank as opposed to a battlefield role, which is kind of cool. So we have silver helmets for regular guys. Sergeants have a red helmet. Veterans have white. A veteran sergeant would have a red helmet with a white stripe. The red obviously denoting the sergeant and the white uh, denoting his uh, his veteran status a lieutenant would have a red and white stripe over a silver helmet and a captain has a silver helmet but he has gold bits on it but I think more to do with the lieutenants and the uh, lieutenants stand out quite nicely I do like that uh, and the captains is really down to their shoulder pauldron which uh, denotes who they are along with knee pads so there's there's quite a lot of fluff when you when you really get into these space marines. I do love this when you really get into your space marine um, lore and fluff, and when you're actually painting these guys down, you start adding things like transfers or even freehand markings. You can really really separate your guys from individual squads, even down to individual. Um, uh, individual characters I mean you can you can give even the regular troops if you really want to spend the time you could even use um, you can give guys individual character um, which I do like so yep 
And uh, what I'm going to do now, if we just bear with me, I've seen it pop up a few times now. So I've just created a brand new command now. So if you put, uh, if you use the keyword Wayne says now, you'll be able to. Uh, uh, I've seen him say it enough. I think it's time that Wayne had his own um, keyword because he does a fantastic job of keeping an eye on my uh, chat for me, and he also uh, pops up all of the links when I need them. So. All right, so we're going to move on to War Gear, which I'm surprised this has come in at War Gear number five. I do remember the very first time we saw Space Marine War Gear. Um, I did, I actually said my surprise that it wasn't a bolter uh, type uh, explanation. Um, uh, let's find out where the War Gear, yeah, Space Marine's War Gear number one was Reva War Gear. Which I am surprised. Um, in fact, because we, we went from Reaver War Gear, Power Weapons, uh, the Force Weapons for the Librarians, uh, even in Scepter War Gear, and it's not until we get to War Gear number five that we um, find out about Bolt Weapons, which, I mean, is the bread and butter of Space Marines overall. I mean, even the first Space Marines we got were standard intercessors with bolt weapons. So I am surprised that we had to wait until war game number five, issue number 18, before we even had a little bit of fluff about what the weapons are. So I am surprised by that. Um, but we have a lot of fluff about you know, the various bolt guns, the bolt rifles, the heavy bolters, the storm bolters. Um, nothing yet actually on here about the actual what the round is. Which obviously is essentially a rocket, um, which is uh, interesting. But we have plenty of uh, plenty of fluff about the various weapons. I know some people can get quite confused about what the weapons actually are that Space Marine uh, that models, not just Space Marines, that models have. Um, so it'll be interesting uh, to see if they go deeper into that. But now we move on. There seems to be a lot of fluff in this. I, uh, like I said, I don't actually read these until we get to them. So uh, I don't know how much further there are in this. But we have Space Marine Warriors number four. I want to have a look through Space Marine Warriors number one, two, three, Space Marine Warriors. So here we go. So now this is one that's going to split in. We already have Space Marine Warriors number five, which was the Inceptors. And the Space Marine Warriors number three was the Aggressors. And this is the Hell Blasters, which we got last week. Um, so, looks like more attention to Primaris weapons and not standard Marines. Actually, to be fair, I would disagree with you there, Wayne. Um, if I can uh, quickly find it again, um, if we have a look at War Game number five, the bolt weapons. If we have a look at this, um, there's actually only one. Um, there's two Primaris weapons here. Um, the bolt rifle at the top here, and just off of shot we have the assault bolter from the aggressors. Um, to be fair, we have bolt pistol, storm bolter, heavy bolter, bolt gun, and the combi bolter, all of which are regular Space Marine weapons. Um, only two out of seven are Primaris ones. Um, so we have some fluff on the Hellblasters which we got last week in uh, the group with the, was it last week that we got the, yeah we got two extra intercessors, two Hellblasters and the first of the Inceptors. Um, so I'm interested, uh, I am in, finding it funny that we got the Hellblasters one this week and the uh, Inter Inceptors last week. Um, it's surprising considering we have two of these guys and only one of those guys. Don't know. It's really interesting the way that they've done it that way around. And we have yet another one of the Space Marine Battles. Number nine, the relief of Lysias. Is that how you say it? I have absolutely no idea. Uh, I'm not sure where the battles go. I think they go in there. Ah, here we go. 
So we have some more of these. Don't forget, in two weeks' time, we're going to be doing the um, the folder breakdown, and we'll have a look through the folder to see how it's shaping up in terms of uh, story and fluff and the way it reads as you go through the folder. I think it might be time that I need to actually sit down and read this so that I can actually be a bit more informed about what information we have and haven't got. But, as usual, uh, we can see... Uh, who we have fighting on this one we have the ultramarines and silver templars and here we have demon engines plague marines and tanks on the other side and it's the defense of the ultramarines forces on lysius i think that's how you say it. no idea and i mean i haven't really been around reading much of this fluff but we have uh, lots of stories and uh, discussion about the battle itself and various fluff It's hatchet. They don't make sense. No, <laughs> they don't. Alrighty then. So we're going to pop that there and move along to the painting section here. And we have painting a base, fine faint it, paint, base fine details, which we have uh, Rakar Flesh, Mephiston Red, and Mechanicus Standard Grey. Um, when did we get the Mechanica Standard Grey? I can't remember what folder, which, uh, which magazine we got that. But we use an easy guide to provide you with fist and red, rack out flesh paints and fine details to your model. We also add some Mechanica Standard Grey to your aggressors, which I haven't done yet. But what I want to do is we have a look at the painting a base of uh, Lead Belcher, Bugman's Glow. Uh, we're painting the shade. I'm trying to figure out where this would go. Shading with non oil, shading with agrax surf shade. Um, see, these are these are difficult as to where they actually fit in with this model because we don't have any um, we don't have any uh, specific models that we're painting, so they don't fit uh, under with you know a specific model. Um, and it's just basically we're going through painting fine details. So if I just pull out this section. Um, I think I will put it uh, behind painting with shades because this is obviously is done uh, according to the magazine after you've painted your shades um, and we're actually going back to I mean yeah I mean that's where I'm gonna put it to be honest with you I don't use the painting guide because it's not how I paint but for you guys at home I will be adding some extra paint to these guys um, at the end of the episode, uh, we'll just pop that in there just before we get into um, the specific painting, the specific models. Alright, so we're just going to leave that there because I'm not a fan of the... Uh, um, I'm not a fan of the painting details. Wow, your first divider has broken at the punch holes, alright. Yes, they have indeed. Yeah, it has. Um, and to be honest with you, you know, this is the thing. I only ever use this folder um, at during this show. I don't flick through this any other time. Not yet, I haven't. And so for that to have split there is a bit unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I only actually open this up when we're doing this show. So yeah, it's not fun. So we're going to go right the way down to the back of the book here just before the um, the data sheets and we have a look at the mission like I said as we're still using the small uh, cargo deck uh, map for this and I think it's kind of a case of these now are just uh, giving us they're not really giving us many um, extra rules so much it's just a case of you have a mission you this is what uh, models you're gonna get this is how you win that's the battle round and uh, get on with it you know it's it's not too difficult and uh, you have two different uh, options um, I think basically this is teaching you this is one of the first missions that you have where it's just telling you that you set up your uh, deployment as per for the whole thing um, 
so it's rather than using the I mean you're still using individual sides of the board you're still using the Death Guard side and the Space Marine side but now it's just giving you a three inch deployment zone these are the models and you put them within that deployment zone so I think they told us about that last week is that last time they told us about that how they stopped telling us to use yeah during a tutorial for mission number 16 and tutorial 19 for the mission deployment that's the one yeah so we're telling you about the uh, deployment zones per se and then this week it's just uh, you learnt it last week now just to reinforce it we'll do that so we have the mission of seas and the mission of clear so which is nice they're kind of starting to uh, trust you to be able to play the game properly um, and we know very very soon that you're going to get your first the, the A5 um, actual rules that we get when you buy the box game for Warhammer 40,000 you get the uh, the small I should have really found that but I uh, forgot to pick it up I don't know where it is I've got the A5 rule data sheet somewhere where it tells you how to play the game but I keep forgetting to look for it but we're gonna get one very soon anyway so I'll have two and some more data sheets one for the Mifitic blight hauler I think we're probably getting these when you do um, so for argument's sake for the mission um, have you used I don't know if you've used the Mofitic blight hauler for the past couple of weeks so we haven't had the data sheet for it but you use the uh, blight hauler during this mission so it's giving you the data sheet for it uh, that might be the way they're doing it I don't know if anybody's playing through if you're playing through the mission so you let me know uh, whether you know for the last couple of weeks you haven't needed to use it so you haven't had the data sheet for it uh, and then as soon as you need to use it it gives you the data sheet I have no idea I know that we're getting um, I know that we're getting data sheets with new models so obviously if we get a new model um, it gives us a data sheet uh, when we need it with the new model but I'm curious about when we're actually receiving the uh, data sheets for models we've already got so there we go so that's getting very very full as you can see there that's definitely getting pretty full there um, as we suspect there's 80 issues which means you know after so long I reckon each uh, individual folder is gonna have one section of the magazine uh, yeah my sons love the blight hauler have you been using it though since um, since they've brought out the data sheets have you had new missions including the blight hauler or have they kind of not used the blight hauler for the last couple of missions and then the first time you need it you've got a data sheet uh, the rules for it have been printed in previous issues in the green colored parts of the magazine yeah that's that's fair enough I just wondered about the data sheet itself whether you've actually needed the data sheet uh, to play the missions you, you know what I mean I don't know all right here we go and this is there we go so we have on the back rather than it telling us to subscribe it's just telling us that your new playmat that we received with this uh, magazine from issue number 21 the planet goes planet side on Corvan 2 uh, so you have your new battle mat which is uh, representative of Corvan 2 we're going to start by getting our new terrain in here which of course you can see has been placed the actual terrain has been placed on this map um, with uh, in the same places where on the flip side of that map there is just a picture of that terrain and there's not much of it you can see there isn't a huge amount of terrain on that map um, you would definitely want more than what there is there but we are receiving that with the magazine and we're going to be getting some new missions of course we get new missions I would imagine every single episode uh, every single week uh, it's easier with the date she saves having to flip through the pages it, certainly is and if you're a premium subscriber you should already have a uh, a card with the data sheet uh, for the blight hauler on it as well which obviously makes it even easier and the quest the conquest continues on the smog shrouded surface of Corvan 2 the forces of the De death guard assault the planet's few remaining defenders the invaders have captured many foundries and factories 
and the planet is covered in countless horrors. The Ultramarines are en route to break the Death Guard blockade. Battle Brothers board their drop pods and transports, ready to be launched onto the grimy surface to counterattack the Death Guard ground forces. Can intercessors use drop pods? I don't think they can. Uh, the men and women of Corvan 2 pray to the Emperor to be saved from the horrors attacking them. The Ultramarines will answer their prayers. Uh, it does sound that down here it does tell us that a Corvan 2 is an industrial world of great value to Ultramar and the Imperium. I do believe we have a section in the uh, fluff part of the folder that gives us uh, some information about various planet structures and various planets um, and what they are. So you might be able to find an industrial world, a uh, little bit of fluff of what an industrial world is. Or, if you haven't, I would imagine that from issue 21, or very soon, we will know what Corvon 2 is exactly, and what an industrial world is. It's an interesting page with a picture of the new map. Your question is, why? I think, because this is only issue number 18, and we've received a new map, and then the mission that is in it is only of a small map, um, they have decided to tell you that you've got a new map now, but you're not getting you're not getting any missions for it until issue number twenty one. Uh, my question is, why did they give us it in issue number eighteen rather than waiting till issue number twenty one? Um, and I think my question probably will answer itself. Um, that we'll probably have some decent amount of stuff in the magazines I can't remember exactly off the top of my head oh actually I don't need to know off the top of my head I did get a delivery of conquest magazines didn't I so I know what we're getting between issues number 18 and 21 um, so I've come over here uh, issue number 19 we're going to be getting uh, some terminators uh, Lord Felthius uh, issue number 20 is this issue number 20 I think is, an, is the third and final container and then issue 21 is um, is the um, Reavers and there we go that is issue number 21 is where you get your little A5 um, rules book thing um, so yeah I mean the, what you get in issues 19, 20, and 21 is actually pretty substantial and pretty decent. So I reckon what they've done is they've given us a mat with a magazine that only has a couple of paints in it to kind of make this magazine a bit better than what it is. Uh, unfortunately, because of the way they've done it, that also means that you know, you've got a mat knocking around for two issues before you've got the uh, ability to uh, use it, or at least the missions that come with it. So, uh, issue number 21 has a novella too. We, that does indeed. We'll have a look at that when we get there. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll have a look, see what it is. I think it's probably a nice little, uh, I think that's a nice little plug for uh, Black Library, I think is probably what that one is doing there. Um, but yeah, so, you know, instead of the usual subscribe now and uh, become a subscriber, we have uh, a nice little page there which I'm quite back, quite impressed with. I do like this. It is nice. It's kind of hyping it up a bit. And uh, hopefully you're not going to be too disappointed by the next few issues. The bad superimposing shows you where you have to put the terrain. Check that picture to see what I mean. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it tells you exactly exactly where that pipe is and the and the um, uh, tank traps, the what's it. Yeah, it is exactly. It tells you pretty much. And I think it probably, I mean, having just a plain blank and just say, here, go put some terrain on there, I think it probably can throw people through a bit of a loop and they're just trying to figure out, you know, how do you put your terrain down? It kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of walks you through. I mean, it, it def this magazine definitely does have um, a nice way of being able to kind of hold your hand and walk you through it. You know, you don't get left in the lurch with what it is exactly you're doing. So I do kind of like that. And finally, there we go. That's uh, the back of issue 19 and 20. Uh, we'll see what we're going to be getting. So uh, that's kind of like, like it. Uh, don't, uh, if, uh, don't, 
uh, don't uh, if I like being told where to put the terrain. Uh, I think that was an important word there. Is that you don't know if you like being told where to put the terrain. Um, I mean, it's certainly um, it's one way of doing it. I mean, uh, I think that's it's nice that it's double sided, so you don't have to you don't have to do as you're told if you don't want to. Um, so you know there is there is that. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. I, if you don't like being told what to do, you just don't do it. Use the blank side and put the train down where you want. Um, it is nice that if you do if you do feel that you're a bit stuck, then uh, you can um, you can just decide not to do it. Or if you're a bit stuck, you can uh, be told how to do it so that you uh, feel more. Yeah. So, you know, if you need your hand holding, you can do it. So, let's have a quick gander. Before we uh, open up some paint, which I'll open up the ones I already have rather than open up the new ones. Uh, before we add some paint to these two fellas here, we'll have a look through the art book as well. And before I pull it all out, we'll have a look at the, um, the overall look of the thing. And, I mean, it looks pretty decent. I mean, it's a good quality. It's nice nice thick uh, wallet for the uh, for the book to be in um, it's not damaged in any way that I can see off of a cursory look uh, I did see that some people did mention that um, you know this only came through the door in a jiffy bag um, so you know some people may find that theirs have been damaged especially in the corners it looks like there is a tiny amount of damage to the whips to the corner of mine here um, I can't really tell so much. It doesn't it's not a snug fit? It just about slides in there, so it does fall out very easily. Um, with the with the cut out here, I'm surprised that they didn't make it tighter. Um, but you know, it slides out easy enough. It looks yeah, that's all right. This is the important bit to find out whether fourteen ninety nine a month, whether fourteen ninety nine was worth it. Um, now admittedly it's uh, pretty much all to do with ultramarines and plague marines because that's what conquest is. This is uh, having another look at some of the other uh, information about this thing. Um, in fact we have a blurb on the back. For over 30 years the heroics in honor of the Warhammer 40,000 universe has been immortalized in art. It is through these uh, visions of the 41st millennium that we see mankind's dark and distant future. From the glorious spires of towering cathedrals to the blood-stained soil of desolate planets, we are given revealing insights into what humanity has become, the threats against which it must endure. This book is a celebration of the art that has brought the Warhammer 40,000 universe to life for enthusiasts across the globe. I thought it was a bit more of a blurb about what this is, and apparently this is um, this is uh, art that come that is supposed to um, be about conquest more than art along 40k as a whole uh, but that does include um, a bit of a black and white uh, picture here which I believe is the uh, Dark Imperium artwork that we get for the box of Dark Imperium I think that's the front cover for the box uh, shut up and take your money yeah um, so I think obviously conquest is an amalgamation of the No No Fear box set, the um, Dark Imperium box set, some of the various other push fit models that GW have done over the years, or the easy to build stuff uh, from, for argument's sake, the bikes that we're going to get later in the future, uh, will probably be identical to the ones that you can buy in the store. But uh, you know, they also sold them in. Um, they had a, a Revel, Revel kind of was able to do some. Uh, Warhammer stuff in the past, uh, so we're pretty much getting all of the same sort of stuff. So, um, so it's uh, yeah. So we, we it's artwork that you probably have seen elsewhere, uh, but also some of it that is for Warhammer Conquest itself. And here we go. This is the art of Warhammer Forty Thousand Conquest, which some of you have seen before because this obviously is the um, the I believe it's the uh, it's the artwork that is on in the front cover of the Warhammer 40,000 rulebook. Uh, if 
I find that very, very quickly, which is up here. Um, well, it's certainly uh, on the spine here of the rule book. So it's not artwork that is only found in Conquest, but if we have a look through it, there we are. We have a full cover. We have full color from the uh, from the inside back cover. Uh, you have, oh the fart cart <laughs> the uh, my finic light hauler. Um, so yes, we have. Uh, so this was uh, yeah. This is the dark Imperium. We have credit. Uh, there is credit for the artist and where it comes from and the year it was done, which is nice. Uh, I don't know if uh, the artwork is credited some. I do believe people were talking about artwork being credited, uh, or it used to be credited in the past, but it's, it's not so easily found who did what picture. Um, so um, it's nice to see that, you know, this, this picture was done by Igor Sid from the Dark Imperium box cover. So, yeah, I was right about the box cover. Um, so we have seen this artwork before elsewhere and now it's just in this book that you can have a look at and peruse at your leisure. Um, some more from Raymond Swoland, which is the Space Marine Index cover. Uh, no, sorry, the Space Marine Codex cover. So you have a nice print of that in the book. And Dark Imperium Frontis, uh, whatever it is, from Guan, Guan Da Li. I don't know, I have no idea. But well, we can go through, and if you know, obviously, if you've got this book, you can see all of the artwork from the various pictures. A really nice um, spread there. We have Mortarian. This was um, this is what told people that Mortarian was on his way. Uh, I believe uh, this picture was actually released yeah, back in 2016, um, and people noticed that this was Mortarian. I think this was black and white when we first saw it. And uh, shortly after, Gwaliman was released, I believe. It was very, very small down in this cover. Um, so there we are. I'm going to skip a few books, a few pages. Oh, there we go. That's very nice. That was completely at random. Uh, we have the galaxy of the Imperium, as it is, or at least a picture of the galaxy as it stands at the minute. Uh, which is a fantastic map. Um, my favorite place is here as most people would assume is Baal over there there's Wayne's homeworld there of Femris uh, Nocturne for the Salamanders if you know what you're looking for the rock there for the Dark Angels and Agrax there that's where that's where all of the wash comes from is uh, from Agrax down here and uh, do we have anywhere else where is where's Where's Terra? So Terra and Mars are supposedly right here, which isn't the center of the universe, obviously, or center of the galaxy. Kind of off to the side, the center is over here. And we have, of course, the Great Rift going right the way through the middle here. So carry on going through. Gwaliman versus Starbrand, which is a nice epic. Certainly gives you, it certainly could give you some, uh, some inspiration as to doing some... Uh, uh, some uh, dioramas and certainly great reference for painting yeah you could use this as a painting reference guide um, as long as you're doing um, ultramarines or death guard we have some regular uh, what do we have here we have some regular chaos marines here I say regular they're all they're all from a different uh, different um, original what's it um, yeah it's true you can find these pictures elsewhere but it is a nice book uh, if we have a look through here we can see we have some uh, we have the Silver Templar guy here nice big looking um, nice big I mean you do have some of these pictures will be in the magazine itself uh, but certainly so he's going through the folder uh, there we have some ultramarine um, successor chapters going on here and the various uh, color palettes you could use you can even have yourself some red ultramarines these are the Genesis chapter we can go through we have the Imperial Fist so that's the first sounding founding chapter and uh, Crimson Fist which are um, a 
successor chapters of these. Hammers of Dawn, a successor chapter of the Crimson Fist. Uh, sorry, of the Imperial Fist. I don't know about the Invaders. That's uh, something I haven't heard of those before. Who do we have here? Ah, White Scars. Uh, Solar Hawks. Destroyers. I imagine that these are the first founding chapters, and then you got some of each of them, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and uh, no Space Wars, Blood Angels, or anything like that. Uh, so we have some more artwork from various other uh, models. Uh, one of a Space Hulk. The Space Hulk Sin of Damnation from 2008. So we have some older stuff in here as well. And we also move on to some of the Death Guard as well. Uh, not to leave those guys out. Death Guard versus Tau. So, you know, it's not all about the uh, Ultramarines. I don't know what Tau they're fighting there. White guys with red. So I don't know. What we got? We have some characters here. We have the Blightbringer and we have a Lord of Contagion. I do believe there is a picture of Typhus in here. Speaking of the Lord, speaking of the Devil. There we are, Typhus himself. And we have some Foul Blight spawn as well. And then we do have some other, um, some uh, Plague Marine colours there. And of course we have had some of these in the magazine already, so we can go through. You could go through the magazine and have a look at these. And you can see the different colour schemes and the different... Uh, Different ones we have a fantastic. <laughs> this is disgusting. This is yeah. We have seen this picture before as well. This is in the magazine, it's just in much smaller and it's in magazine format. And uh, yeah, and we have uh, a chaos cultist going on there. So we have some fantastic artwork. I mean, it is nice. Maybe you might want to have a look through. We have some Death Guard and Space Marine iconography going on there. Just uh, something to uh, make it look pretty, and uh, a repeat of the Dark Imperium box set cover there. So yeah, I mean it's um, it costs fourteen ninety nine um, with the uh, subscription. Um, is it worth fourteen ninety nine? I suppose it depends on your viewpoint. Uh, I would be nice to hear what you think, either in the chat or in the future in the comments below. Um, because yeah, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. Is it worth it? Uh, I would like to uh, see if I could uh, change the fill, uh, the uh, the focus on that here. I have to just turn that off for a second. Pretty sure that picture of a Nurgle spaceship is from Battlefleet Gothic. Um, I didn't have a look actually to see. Uh, to see how uh, how old that picture was actually to be fair um, I just want to see if I can get the uh, camera to focus um, I have no idea what's going on here something's gone terribly wrong with my uh, with my camera here but bear with me a second talk amongst yourselves huh. where's my Desk can, there we go. Properties. Let me deal with this. It's not working. Huh. Uh, oh, and that's because I turned off the wrong one. Ha ha ha. Let's see if we uh, can get that working again. It looks like I've just crashed my desk cam because it's not working. I need to refresh my desk cam. So if you bear with me just a second, um, let's bring that into here. No, nope, that's not working. So I've just crashed my desk cam. So I won't be able to do any painting because this is crashed. I'm waving my hand in front of it. So uh, that's not going to work. Okay. Um, nice boo. Not worth the cost. I have seen or have most of the pictures. So you'll sell yours absolutely is perfectly worth doing if uh, if you're not really gonna not gonna use it then uh, you may as well sell it on or send it back you know either way uh, if we start getting the tanks and you still haven't sold the book Wayne 
we should have a talk. Uh, fair enough. Um, yeah, I would like to paint those guys, but I'm not going to be able to get around to doing it because uh, I made a mistake. I think I turned off the wrong camera when I was trying to figure this stuff out. I was meant to turn this one off so that I could uh, change the focus on this one and it's crashed. The downside of using two cameras of exactly the same make and model, my computer doesn't really understand what the difference between the two is, so I can't tell it to focus one and not the other, uh, which is a shame. Which we'll get to eventually. We, I, I want to, in the future, in the coming months, or coming, you know, well, however long it takes, we'll start getting lots of different, um, different uh, cameras going on here. So, it looks like there's some dealing going along in the chat with uh, Wayne is going to flog his art book. Um, yep, so uh, feel free to uh, deal with that. So, uh, yeah, Wayne threw up the support for Patreon. Yeah, don't forget, becoming a Patreon gives you access to the Discord server. It also gives you access to... The Patreon only Facebook group and chat so don't forget to uh, have a look at that at your leisure he's put the link in the chat but there's also a link in the description below as always don't forget to send me your pictures uh, one of Adio Control 3 which is uh, uh, Commander Kuja you've got lots of different names going along the internet there Mark but uh, yeah he sent me a picture into the, today and that was in the uh, what's that? I might slow that down for the next show because it kind of flips by us really really quickly you can't really see what we've got but yeah don't forget to send me your pictures anyway if they're a regular picture I'll tag them be of OPS live which you can see uh, there uh, and if it's a conquest model it'll be be of OPS conquest I'd love to see how you're doing with your conquest magazines as well if you're getting them um, excuse me um, yeah Wayne, if you can get rid of it quick, then just do it. I mean, to be fair, you could just send it back. I mean, that's that's going to be quick. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if there's much else to have a chat about, actually. Although, my patrons, I will say that I want to see if I can set up uh, my live stream um, that I'll do just randomly. Uh, so, if you want to jump on the Discord after I've done here, We'll have a look to see if I can set up uh, live streaming, but with you guys chatting in my ear. I don't know if that's going to have uh, a drastic effect on the um, stream. Um, I don't know. We'll uh, have a practice with that and uh, see what we're doing. So I might fiddle around with that uh, shortly after the show. Um, so uh, jump on the Discord and we'll have a chat there as well. Um, you may have to pay postage to send it back. I don't quote me, but I do believe Hatchet have a free post address. Um, need a Discord command? Uh, no, because um, the Discord command uh, you don't have access to Discord until you have uh, till you're a Patreon. Uh, in which case, I personally send you an invite to the Discord server. So uh, you don't need a Discord command. Um, but I'm just going to have a look at Hatchet Partworks for you uh, in terms of uh, their address. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Hatchet Partworks. Um, Hatchet Partworks. I want the contact us, basically. So uh, let's have a look at the website for them. Um, You goofed. Yeah, that is fair enough. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, it's a PO box. Is how to contact them. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, it's po it's a possibility that you could possibly send it back. Um, free of charge. I, I don't know. I did see somebody somewhere uh, did mention that uh, the uh, return address was free. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I, I could fiddle around looking at this, but um, 
I could fiddle around with this, but I'm not sure where I would find it. It would take me some time to try and find a return address. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll yeah, maybe in the Facebook chat, I'll uh, <laughs> have a look for you. Wayne, with the art book, I would put it on eBay or use the Facebook selling sites as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you if um, if you want to sell it quick, you know, go on eBay or go on to um, yeah, Facebook selling sites will sell these things very very quickly. Um, so uh, whatever, part of your plan. There we go. It's already yeah, uh, you're on the ball. You know what you're doing. All right, quarter to eight. You think about that quarter to eight. A conquest show has gone on for an hour and fifteen minutes. And I haven't felt the need to stretch it out. Although, to be fair, we did have about 20 minutes talking about the paint that we received in the magazine. So, uh, <laughs> that was interesting. All right, I think, though, that that pretty much comes to the end of this show. I was going to add some paint to these guys, but as you can see, I'm fiddling around with these guys, and you can't see anything because the camera crashed. So, uh, I need to get on eBay. I need to have a look on the... On, well, I'm just generally on the internet and see if I can find a very good quality camera that uh, is a different make and model to that one. And then we'll see if we can get that. So I'm using two different cameras. Mark did tell me uh, yeah, way back in the past, he did tell me uh, months ago, so you're going to have trouble with this, using two cameras exactly the same. But uh, yes, thank you, Wayne. As if almost on cue, uh, on Tuesday uh, tomorrow, We'll have, I'll be back tomorrow with a game with Reese or at Chick Paints from Instagram. If you haven't already, check her out. Um, have a look on Instagram. I'm not sure I've got a tag for her on one of the commands, so I'm going to find that. And after that, yes, you will find me on Thursday as well, where I will be painting, or oh, I'll be starting a new project. I finished the Canon S last week. And so this week I will be starting Inquisitor Eisenhorn, which is going to be fun. I did want to, I've always wanted to paint it, that guy since I saw him for the first time. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much, don't forget, I'm all over the internet, which Wayne is graciously showing me around. Uh, yep, it's a new model on Thursday. In fact, he's over here. Uh, Oi! New model! Eisenhorn. So we'll get him done uh, next week, or no, on Thursday. I'll be back tomorrow with a game of that cheek paints at about seven o'clock UK time. Uh, don't forget, jump on Discord if you're a Patreon, and we'll probably have a bit of a chat and see if anybody's free to uh, help me set up a different type of stream after I've reset my camera. So we'll have a look about that. And uh, Wayne is playing around with the commands there, which is fun. Do a battle suit. Well, uh, uh, we'll we'll see about doing some of those things. Like I said, um, I did have a uh, announcement to my patrons um, that I am doing a few changes around in the studio, and so hopefully uh, we'll be doing some more varied stuff in the future once I've set a few things or sorted a few things out in the studio. So uh, yeah, some interesting times ahead. Once I get over the hurdles that I've got in front of me now. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Wayne's done a fantastic job sharing all those. Thank you very much. Uh, so to Mark, Wayne, Tim. Uh, who else have we had? We've had a cute few people in here. Uh, Mark, Wayne, Tim. Is it just the three of you tonight? I think it has been. Thank you for joining me tonight. It's been a pleasant show. And uh, I will see you again tomorrow for a game on, well, with At Chick Paints. So, uh, yeah, Patreon, join me on Discord. And thank you for watching this one, and I'll catch you in the next one, alright? ta -ra.